so tell us what your business does. Yeah, so uh, basically what Epic Hack Studios is, is it's a consulting firm. Uh, so we come in with companies and we'll help them uh, in, area that's, in any areas that they need really. Uh, so whether that's marketing, uh, sales, product development, um, even down to things like inefficiencies within production. Uh, but the, the two things that we don't actually really handle uh, would be the actual production of the goods uh, and then the logistical uh, aspects behind the, the transportation of those goods. So when did you start this business and uh, what made you want to do this? So we began the big business back in August of 2011 uh, and the, the main goal behind us creating and beginning this business uh, really was to uh, get a little bit more experience uh, within uh, an entrepreneurial setting, within a business world before even coming to college. Uh, knowing that uh, we were both going to likely go on to companies, uh, hopefully graduate, go into middle management, continue to move up, um, and, and be a VP or president by someday. We thought this would be a great way to get us on the right track. Well, what kind of skills do you guys possess that um, made you kind of, uh, gave you a leading start from other, from other company starters? Um, I think one of the skills that we, we definitely possess um, would be time management skills, uh, as well as uh, a real vision um, and having the drive to then complete that vision. So because we knew what we wanted to do, how we wanted to go about uh, creating this business, uh, and, and really had clear goals, uh, we were able to uh, figure out the steps that were needed in order to reach those goals, and then we took action uh, and worked towards those steps. So a lot of people have fears about starting their own business. What made you think that you could do it? So we definitely had our own fears about, about starting a business uh, and we were worried, especially with how young we were, about the business not really taking off and getting a foothold. Um, but I think for us what it was was this willingness to learn and this willingness to work. Uh, we did know that coming into it we wouldn't have you know, the greatest business acumen, we wouldn't be the smartest guys out there, um, but we were definitely going to be the hardest working. Uh, and that was, I think that was really what enabled us to be able to really take off. People loved our, our business work ethic, um, our drive, and our ability to not just make deadlines, but continually beat them uh, and exceed expectations. And were there any moments when you felt discouraged, like you wanted to back out? And if so, what made you keep going? There definitely were. I remember back when, uh, when we were meeting with some of our first clients, uh, and because we didn't really have a, a large portfolio, we didn't have a large client base, uh, really any references, a lot of companies were skeptical to take us on, uh, especially with how young we were. Uh, but the one thing that I remember uh, really kept us going was holding on to this idea that we could have our own business, that we really could do this, uh, and that you know if we continue to put in that effort and we continue to put that work in, uh, that one day we would be able to, to grow the company. Uh, if you had asked me back in August whether uh, I would have been flying to Barcelona to meet with potential clients, uh, or that you know I would know that we would have such a, a large client base now, I would have, I definitely wouldn't have believed it. Uh, but looking back, it's it's amazing to see what we've done, and I definitely chalk it up to the hard work uh, and and our resilience. Uh, now I understand that you and Nick both speak Spanish fluently. Can you tell me more about how that's influenced your company and your clients abroad? Yeah, so uh, definitely having that, that foreign language component uh, has certainly helped us with expanding our business, uh, especially as we started to look global. Uh, we had actually found a client in Barcelona that was looking to, uh, to come on board with us and, uh, and, and use some of our services. So this past summer, we decided to uh, fly out there and meet with our client face to face. Uh, it really was a, a very rewarding trip, uh, especially to see that you know, something that, that you study here, um, be it a foreign language, your business, uh, really can play off uh, in, in a different setting outside of the United States, as well as it gave us a better understanding of the, the global business culture, uh, mainly that within, within Spain and within the Catalonia region. What is the largest business that you have? Uh, the largest business that we've ever worked for has about 50 clients. Um, I can't say who it is due to confidentiality agreements. Um, but that's the largest business that, we, that we've worked with today. And how many employees do you guys have here? Currently we have uh, four employees. Basically, 
we, uh, we base it on, on temp contracts, depending on the product we make. Uh, because we are a consulting company, we don't necessarily, and we are a, a growing business, we don't necessarily know how many products we'll have. So uh, rather than bringing on full-time employees uh, and having to worry about working through all those different aspects of contract negotiations and things like that, uh, we bring people on on a temp basis, depending on what projects we have uh, and what areas of expertise we need. So say we're working on web development, but Nick uh, doesn't necessarily have the time to do it, I don't have the time to work on HTML, uh, we might bring in someone who has a background within graphic design uh, to help us out with that aspect of the project. Okay, and what do you look for in the contractors that you hire? Uh, so out of our, our attempts, we definitely look for people that complement our skill sets. Um, so, you know, for myself, I, I have the ability to make sales as well as uh, I've got a, a pretty decent marketing background uh, at this point now. So definitely being able to bring in someone that has uh, a little bit more of a technical aspect, someone that um, has those, those skills or if we're working in a certain area that we don't necessarily understand uh, as much about it, we'll bring in someone within those. Okay, so tell me about the branch of marketing. Yeah, so we, uh, we designed our PAC Studios to be a consulting firm, so that way we would be able to uh, enter multiple different different markets. Uh, so as a consulting firm, uh, we don't necessarily have to be pigeonholed within a certain area, and that's uh, been something that's been very valuable to our company. Okay, um, so what barriers do you face with that market? Um, I would say that a lot of the barriers that we face is that uh, come from us being a, a small company and um, not really have a lot of name recognition uh, and because of how we are. Uh, because of all, all those things, a lot of people are very skeptical of our company um, and are not necessarily as, uh, as willing to, to gamble, for lack of a better word, on our, uh, on our skills and on our services. Uh, but what we found is, is that through slowly building that client base, through uh, working with smaller companies, we're beginning to get uh, a lot more of those references and a lot more of those recommendations coming back uh, to help us then, then in the future. Um, so, what niche would you say you're a part of? I would definitely say that uh, the niche that, that we have kind of found uh, it comes back to our consulting. Um, it really has come down to us being able to uh, get out, talk face to face with the uh, with our clients and being able to uh, go to them, speak with them, rather than just sending a full email or a full phone call. Uh, and it's, it's in those one-on-one -on -one interactions uh, that we have really, truly begun to find our niche. So how do you get out of school with uh, all this? Yeah, so um, it's, it certainly has presented a challenge, uh, especially as the courses have, have gotten harder and harder. Uh, but one thing that we recognize is that because we are uh, in school right now, we try to take on uh, only as many projects as we know we can handle uh, and that we know we can complete to the fullest of our abilities. Okay. So you take this through school, where do you see it going after school? Um, I definitely see myself uh, continuing to, to build this business and continuing to grow it after college. Um, because of the work that we've put in uh, so far, uh, it's definitely something that, that we want to continue working on. Uh, at some point, we'll probably begin to weigh the cost in our time versus uh, the, the cost of the company um, and, and likely sell it at some point when we, uh, when we analyze the markets and determine that, that that would be the most profitable uh, move for us to make at that time. Okay, um, and you start this business um, going into college. Where do you get these skills? Uh, I would say definitely a lot of them came from uh, kind of my upbringing. Upbringing, uh, like I said, you know, we didn't necessarily have the same education as a lot of other people within this market. We didn't have the same uh, knowledge base that, that they did, but we did have uh, that drive, that work ethic, that compassion, those sales skills. Um, and I would definitely say that this came from my childhood. From my parents always, you know, reminding me to be open to learning new things, uh, to always putting together my best foot, uh, my best foot forward. Uh, and, and really just always making sure that whether it's cleaning bathrooms uh, or, you know, uh, putting together a, uh, a new strategic plan for a company, that it's something that, that I would sign my name to and be proud of.